actually this whole uh, year, and they we will be changing um, to uh, different songs for our gathering hymns. Also, we want you to know that we're working on um, our closed captioning. Um, so you will find that um, if you want to, at the bottom of your screen, it says to uh, enable your um, auto transcript, which is the same as the cold closed um, captioning. Um, so for those who want to uh, do closed captioning, you can see that it, it is done. Uh, I again welcome you to our service. Let us pray. Lord God, this is the day that you have made. We are so excited and are glad in this day. We welcome you, sweet, sweet spirit, into every house and every place. We know, God, that you have no boundaries. And God, in any place that calls on your name, we know that you are there. God, we're praying for those who are without housing. We are praying that the people, God, who can, will reach out to help those, God, who are in need. Strengthen us, God, through this day as we wait on you. Because, God, you said that if we would wait on you, you would renew our strength. That we, God, would mount up on wings as eagles. We will run and not be weary. We will walk and not faint. We thank you, God, that this promise is always here. And all we have to do is grab it. We thank you for all these wonderful things. In the precious name of your son, Jesus, amen and amen. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place and i know that it's the spirit of the lord and there's a sweet expressions on each face and i know that it's the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for all these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise and with without a doubt we know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place let us greet one another with these words may the peace of christ be with you and also with you have you not known our god is the everlasting god creator of the ends of the earth have you not heard god does not faint or grow weary have you not known god's understanding is unsearchable have you not heard god gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless have you not known? Those who wait for God will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. We came to hear. We come to know. Thanks be to God. And once the bulletin comes back up, we can start our, there we go. Uh, praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Hymn number 139, praise to the Lord the Almighty.
Heavenly God, we extol and honor you for who you are. We praise you for your faithfulness and your tender mercies that we are renewed every morning. We exalt you, sovereign one, for every blessings of yesterday, the gift of today, and the promises of tomorrow. Grant us an enduring faith as we strive against oppression and despair. Endow us with contagious joy that un uplifts the downtrodden and inspires hope in you. Increase in us the faith and the courage of the prophets, the love of Jesus and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. In your majestic name, we pray. Amen and amen. And please join me in the prayer response today, which will be in the United Methodist hymnal number 143 on Eagle's Wings, number 143. If you could zoom back out oh, just a just a touch, please. That's great. Thank you. All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. Our Old Testament lesson comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? Asks the Holy One. Look up into the heavens. Who created all the stars? 
He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name. Because of his great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. O Jacob, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? O Israel, how can you say God ignores your rights? Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And I'll ask you to please stand in your heart for our New Testament lesson, which comes from the Gospel according to Mark. After Jesus left the synagogue with James and John, they went to Simon and Andrew's home. Now Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever. They told Jesus about her right away, so he went to her bedside, took her by the hand, and helped her sit up. Then the fever left her, and she prepared a meal for them. That evening, after sunset, many sick and demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. The whole town gathered at the door to watch. So Jesus healed many people who were sick with various diseases, and he cast out many demons. But because the demons knew who he was, he did not allow them to speak. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. And thank you, Art, for saying, stand in your hearts because we want to hear what God has to say. Lord God, we thank you for this time and this season. And God, this is a season that sometimes we get weary and our strength is waning. Yet God in this world, we are thought to be weak when our strength fails. But God, your word says that when we are weak, you are strong. So God, we know that your strength is always available to us. So help us latch on to you, God, to hold your hand that we may be stood up and be strong in you. God, we thank you that when we are weak, you are strong and your strength is never failing and all enduring. We thank you for the promises that we serve a living God who is alive and well and in us. We thank you for all these wonderful things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. We are now following the journey of Jesus through Mark's gospel. And if you remember last week in Mark's narrative, Mark healed a man who was possessed of de demons. After that healing, he went to the house of Simon Peter and Andrew with Mark and John following. The very next thing that we read in the scripture is that Jesus was told that Peter's mother-in-law was ill. Jesus then went directly, immediately to her and touched her hand, lifted her up, and then the fever left. We have to understand that he touched her hand first, then the fever left. We're never told the mother-in-law's name, but we do know from this scripture that she was a woman of faith because she was waiting on Jesus. Also understand that ordinary people 
couldn't just go take a Tylenol and get better. So the very fact that she was sick in bed with a fever says that she was probably gravely ill and that Jesus understood the gravity of her illness because it said that Jesus immediately went to her and immediately touched her, lifted her up, and then the fever left. We see that she did not ask for Jesus to heal her. She was just waiting for Jesus. She probably knew that Jesus was coming and all that she could do was wait. She waited patiently for him. Our scripture in Isaiah, our Old Testament scripture says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But I've got to tell you, and I'll raise my hand, waiting is tough. We live in a world where waiting is not the thing we want to do. We have microwave dinners. Our cell phones are a computer. Anything that happens is beamed around the world almost instantaneously. If we're hungry, we just go to the phone and we pop a microwave, something in our mind, in our hands, or we call and in a half an hour, there's food, or we can drive up and there's fast food dinners. Everything is quick, fast, and in a hurry. And if you don't believe me, think about the shows that are on now. There's the 90 Day Fiance and the Married at First Sight. Everything is quick. We start to believe that we want what we want, when we want it, and we don't have to wait. But we do. We chafe at the time that our computers take to boot up. When our programs are, are we considered to be slow, we want to know what is wrong with our computers. When we have a job, we expect our yearly cost of living increase. And what happens? We get a pen when we stick at to one position for five years. This is the world that we live. We find that everything is in a hurry. Waiting is just not valued in today's world. But I want you to think about things that we can't rush even if we wanted to. And Earth Day is 365 uh, year, 365 days. The, the day is 24 hours long. A normal pregnancy is about 40 weeks. We age one year, that 365 days at a time. Our, our plants, our big trees have year rings, our growth rings that, that are put on one year at a time. Spring is followed by summer, which is followed by fall, which is followed by winter. Now, sometimes we feel like we skipped those seasons, but those seasons come because our earth rotates around the sun. Humanity, though, has gotten so used to that hurry, hurry up and hurry up space that we try to rush even the normal growth of things. I found that chickens, and this may be a weird thing, but chickens can go from being hatched to the table in sometimes little more than a month. 
Think about that. More, little more than a month, a chicken can be hatched. Food can be grown hydroponically. And we add additives and steroids to our food to increase the production. Now, I'm not saying that this is bad. I'm just saying that we're in a rush to, kick, to get things and food and everything in our world faster. We believe that we are just entitled. Sometimes in our Christianity, we even think God works that same way. We think God is like a, a slot machine that we pray and then out, out of pop an answer. We prayed and nothing happened. It's not a God there. But there is value in the wait. There is value in the wait. In the Old Testament scripture, Isaiah spoke to a people who had been subjugated. They were high and then they were low. There were times that they valued God and they looked after God. And then there were times where they said waiting was not good enough and that they looked for idols and kings. They believed that at times that God had forgotten them and they would wail and moan and say, where is our God? There were times that they believed that God would really come and deliver them. And then there were other times where they said, there is no Messiah, but they had to wait. Even though there was a promise that the Messiah would come from their lineage. In America, African Americans had to wait 400 years. They believed at some point that they would be delivered. They believed that they would be free. Their Christian belief said that they would overcome, but they too had to wait. Today, we may not have had to wait for 400 years to be delivered. We may not have been waiting for this conquering king. But in our today, we're waiting for this pandemic to, to end. We have, at times, just like our Hebrew brothers and sisters, just like our African American brothers and sisters, we did things that said, we believed God, we did everything we're supposed to do. Then at other times we said, there's no God, God's not coming. There are times that we washed our hands, we wore our masks, we socially distanced, we did the stuff we're supposed to do, we exercised. And then there are other times where we said, you know what, I'm just tired. I'm tired of doing all this, I wanna go out. I want to see my friends. I want a hug. I want someone to be close to me. We long for this social gatherings. We long for our freedom. We long for our ability to find ourselves and our friends again. We wait for cell phones, for people sometimes that we don't even talk to most of the time but just talking to them and hear a friendly voice is more than we've had in the last few days. We may have even felt confined at time with our family. And we, we secretly wished that we had a little bit of free space, but then as soon as they walk out of the room, we're saying, wait, wait, where are you? We are getting tired of waiting. Also, whether you know it or not, we're all grieving. We're grieving the loss of our security. We're grieving the loss of our freedom. We're grieving the loss of our, our, secure, our safety. We are constantly bombarded by 
statistics. We're bombarded by positive and negative cases. We're bombarded by the death toll as if we're in a war. But guess what? We are in a war. There is a collective sorrow that we're all experiencing. We're waiting to, for this promised end. And actually all we can do is wait. Now you may be saying to me, pastor, please tell me something that I don't know. Please tell me that I don't know that I'm grieving. Please tell me how to wait patiently. How can I make this in? How can I be okay when I'm not okay? I'm losing all of my patience. I find that I just can't take one more day. I'm having a hard time getting out of bed, Pastor. Help me. The help is found in the scriptures. Let's go back to Peter's mother-in-law. She was sick. She had a fever. She would, you could almost say that she was sick and tired of being sick and tired. She knew that Jesus would be coming soon, but she couldn't make Jesus come any faster. She can't make Jesus skip all the other stuff that was going on. She couldn't make Jesus stop helping the man who had demon possession. She had to wait. But scripture re records is that as soon as she, as Jesus got to the house, he came to her. It may be a matter of inviting Jesus into your everyday life, especially when you feel like you can't wait any longer, when you can't make time go any faster. Guess what? We can't heal the wounds of this world. It's not your job. It's God's job. It's too big for you. You can't be all things to all people at all times. Paul said he tried, but he says that he was all things to all people at all times that he might win a few. What? we have to do is be who you are. You can be who you were created to be. And it's okay. Allow yourself, give yourself the permission to grieve. Even give yourself the permission to feel overwhelmed at times. Allow yourself to be human and know that we're not always strong. You have made be one of those fortunate people who weren't touched with the COVID virus. Maybe you didn't have any of those effects, but I bet all of you know someone who did. You may even know someone who died. I know that we are all experiencing this collective grief and we have to wait for it to get better. But just like the scriptures in this unnamed woman, Peter's mother-in-law had to wait for Jesus to come. And when he then came, he touched her. He took her hand. He stood her up and then the fever left. While she was laying down, she probably had no idea what Jesus would do. All she could know was that Jesus was coming. All she could do was wait for him. And when he came to trust, when he took her hand and stood her up, all she could do was trust. When she grabbed, when he grabbed her hand and trusted, that's when the fever left. 
we all, all of us have to be willing to take the hand of Jesus, even though we're in the middle of our dilemma, dilemma. We're in the middle of our fatigue. We're in the middle of our weakness. We're in the middle of stuff. We have to be willing to trust that Jesus is here, even through our sadness, our anger, our frustration, our loneliness. We have to be willing to let Jesus stand us on our feet. When this woman got up, she did not stand there and say, oh God, thank you so much that you heal me. Thank you, God. Even though we can say that, she showed her attitude, her gratitude by her attitude. She got up and she served. Often we we'll wait for the situation to change before we move or do anything. But like the woman who echoes Isaiah's thought, they, us, you, I, who wait on the Lord, will then renew our strength. Then we will mount up on wings as eagles. Then we will run and not be weary. Then we shall walk and not, not faint. This is not a passive waiting either. It's an active anticipation of God doing something in our life, God moving in our lives. When you stand up to move, God meets you there, lifts you by your hand, strengthens you then. When you make that determination to keep on living, keep on going, keep on moving, despite what it, it seems, you will find that your eagle's wings are there. It is all in the doing. Even if you can't count, climb that mountain, you will find that you can run with patience that race that is set before you and that you can walk in your everyday life without being weary. They, you, I, that wait on the Lord shall renew our strength. It's okay to feel as if you don't have the strength to persevere. It's okay because God sees you and God knows you. It's up to you and I to reach up to God who's always there and let God grab you, stand you up and pull you up so that you can run, walk and fly. Recognize that we're not in this alone. God is always there. And more importantly, God loves you to life. God loves you to life. This promise is a promise that has allowed people to endure for generation to generation. Let us just wait on the Lord that our strength be renewed. Amen and amen. And if you could please join me in our response to the sermon, it will be found in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 375, There is a Balm in Gilead.
Amen. This is time for the offering. And I thank you for that song. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin seek sick soul. Amen. This is time for our offering. Um, the link is here for you. You can go to our web page and um, we thank you for you are such generous givers. You've allowed us to continue to be in mission with God's people, um, even during this pandemic. And I know that God sees you and that God continues to applaud you for your generous offering. This is also time for our... Um, that you think about giving of yourself as well. That as the Peter's mother-in-law, her offering was to get up and serve Jesus. So sometimes you might, have, might not have the physical offering, but you have an offering in prayer. And for that, God even hears your smallest whisper, amen. time for our announcements. As is our normal, at the beginning of the announcements, there is a prayer list. Please print out the prayer list and continue to pray throughout the week for those on our prayer list. You would be surprised how many people on our prayer list have prayers answered. So these are not the same every week, but we continue to Pray for people on our prayer list. I wanted to high, highlight our Baltimore ceasefire, which is our uh, last day for that. We want to do pay, pray for the peace of Baltimore. There are those whose hearts are not uh, yet turned toward violence, but they have they need the strength to continue to fight as we all do. So we do want to pray for Baltimore uh, ceasefire. Um, we will continue to have virtual worship services until it becomes safe for us to, um, to meet in person. We're praying for that. And the effectual or fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. So we're praying that soon we would be able to meet in person. But until such time, again, we um, uh, encourage you to continue your giving. Their portal is below and goes directly to Vanco. We, uh, there is, and Betty says, there have been at least three days this week without a homicide. So recognize that people are praying. And so we're, we're trying to pray that there are 10 days. We have small, we have small wishes, but 10 days and then maybe a month without homicides. Amen. We still do have min noonday prayer. The access code is there. So you please avail yourself of that. Our first quarter mission is a pro bono resource center of Maryland. Um, you continue to read about that. They, um, um, they help support those who uh, pl they play an important role in rent court and training uh, um, 
attorneys to provide represent re representation for those who need so without without fee. Amen. We're continuing to putting masks and more on our fences and to give out socks and gloves and granola bars. Our minister in re residence, our angel Mima, Mimi, uh, lets me know every week of the people who are continued to be served um, by our ministry. And so that is a, a, a blessing. It's It was snowing today. So recognize those people who are not, who are unhoused, have that need. So thank you for continuing to give. Amen. As if you're gifting to, to Old Otterbein, um, you please designate to, uh, and you shop, shop on Amazon. Please designate Otterbein Baltimore United Methodist Church as your charity. A percentage of what you buy uh, on Amazon goes to the church. It doesn't cost you anything, but it is a way to continue to allow us to be in ministry with the community. Ash Wednesday is February 17th. The church has sent out a gift for you. It was sent out Friday, so be looking forward for it. Um, and the link for the services will be forthcoming. The Linton Bible study is Fear of the Other by Will Willimon. This is a wonderful book. The paper, paperback uh, ISBN number is there. Or it comes as an ebook as well. It is not particularly expensive, um, but it will start in February 25th um, at seven, from seven to eight. We expect everyone, not expect, but we um, ask everyone to be a part so that we can all learn together in this Linton Bible study. There are no wrong answers, and there is only um, us as a community learning how to love one another with God's love. The, uh, the dates are there. It is always going to be the same uh, link for the uh, Bible study. So just uh, print those out and keep it. And we look forward to seeing you at the Linton Bible study, first the Ash Wednesday, and then the Linton Bible study, February 25th. And thus ends the announcements. It is now time for our sharing of our joys and concerns who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And our closing hymn will be found in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 101, uh, From All That Dwell Below the Skies, number 101.
Before I say, say the benediction, um, I want to say, I want to take a point of personal privilege and say that I'm grieving as you are grieving. I miss you and I long for the personal contact. And I see people are saying, you know, I want to sing at times. So I'm going to make sure that in at least one of the songs from, especially in our 250th, that there'll be something that you'll be able to sing because it is a sense of community. Now, granted, it gives us cacophony <laughs> at times, but it also gives us a sense of being human and touching each other. So at least for one of the songs, we'll be able to sing. And so thank you so much, Terry. For that answer for that question so it will give us a chance just to hear each other's voice amen yeah, pastor i'll suggest we also do that for the lord's prayer after joys and concerns amen they ate yes amen i agree i think we should all unmute for the lord's prayer yes amen thank you so much oh lord you have indeed carried me on your wings. By your mercy, you have delivered me from sin and death. You have set me free from bondage. Once I was a slave, but now I am free to be your servant. Thank you, Lord. Even as I seek to live faithfully as a child of this new covenant, help me to live each day by grace. May I continue to ride on your wings as you guide me and empower me to serve you in every aspect of my life. All I pray, all praise be to you, gracious Lord, because you carry me on your wings. May I run with and not be weary. May I rise on the wings of eagles. May I know without a doubt that the everlasting God goes with me. Go, you all, in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen.